So we're back in the Twin Otter and I'm just trying some different ways of filming my cockpit to try and make things more interesting. What we can do with this picture, we can make it bigger. We can move it around. Just have a look at cockpit view. Hopefully you get a good view of the instrument so I'm setting the heading bug and then we're going to go into heading mode. I'm going to set the altitude alert to what? Let's see. The elevation is 32 feet so we'll set that for a thousand. Now the eagle-eyed among you will see I'm manipulating my trim, elevator trim control there on autopilot and it's starting a descent. If you watched my autopilot tweaks video which I did recently, that's really a replacement for the pitch and turn panel which is that thing in the centre of the virtual cockpit screen right now and I have that implemented in my setup down here on these four buttons but as an alternative I've also got that set up on the elevator trim control when we're flying an autopilot and that's just a convenience Dropping a bit there. A bit slower than we should really be. We'll make it. I haven't been doing much flight simming or at least making videos recently. Why is that? Well, no one particular reason. I've ditched the Rex Environment Force and Sky Force for my weather. They weren't really working well for me. Really significant performance hits and that was making everything kind of miserable. So I've got rid of them, but I'm back with Active Sky and the Rex. Texture Direct and there should be some more stuff coming up soon we've got a whole bunch of new scenery products coming out from Orbix now I've, I've dodged a lot of these because a lot of them are for X-Plane and I'm not really big on X-Plane that said I do have the True Earth Washington that was too much to resist and I've installed it and had a quick go so I'm going to do something on that. That essentially gives us PNW in X-Plane but better, well theoretically better because we've got the True Earth Photoreal, Photoreal Plus in a sense scenery. So we might be looking at that. I've got a couple of the airports for that as well, Darrington and um, Israel's Farm. Another very interesting thing which 
I haven't done anything about it yet, but Milvis has released its turbo otter. Not only for the for prepared, but it, it's now available for X-Plane as well. So it'd be great to fly the Milvis turbo otter over True Earth, Washington and see how that compares with prepared and the Pacific Northwest PNW land class scenery. So we're going to look out for that. Other thing to look out for is imminently, well I say imminently, soon <laughs> We're hope, hopefully we're going to see the release of the Honeycomb Alpha flight yoke and of course I'm going to do a review of that it's very much anticipated flight yoke self-funded that will be nobody's offered to uh, give me one of those it's going to be very interesting to see how that stacks up, particularly against the Yoko. You know, the few people that have actually had hands on with this yoke have given some very positive reviews. Which suggests that it really is a contender. We'll be looking at that. That should come, well, it's reported to be in transit as we speak to Germany from Southern California. And Germany, of course, is where Aerosoft, the European distributor, is based. And then they'll ship them out. I'll have a pre order, which means I should get one from that batch. But the um, predicted end of October date, I think, is a little bit optimistic. We're now, well, well, maybe not. We're today's the sixth of October, so that could happen. It's Eagle County Regional Villas. Colorado. Let's take it down and we land it on that little strip that's off the end of the, the runway. Of course the other big news is Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 which everybody's raving about given that Microsoft raised its or lifted its embargo on the the recent press event where a whole bunch of people went and were given hands-on access and a lot more information about the product and it does look very good but we're not going to know until it drops really one thing's clear it's going to make all this orbic stuff well, perhaps not redundant, but they're going to have to shift their focus, certainly. I think the focus is pretty clearly going to be... Well, well it's already you know, obvious that Or Orbix is diversifying its, certainly its business relationships. Um, you know, today and yesterday, actually the Cosford show and Orbix have been making announcements there about various partnerships, including one with Milvis, actually. I think that's just a distribution partnership, if I read that correctly. A couple of other partnerships with people I didn't recognise, but their scenery products are going to have to go undergo. Assuming Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 actually delivers and is a good product, they're not going to be able to sell these land class sceneries into that product. Certainly, and of course, nobody knows what the future of prepared the next plane, at least for the home user, is going to be.
but the way the scenery is done in 2020 you can pretty much guarantee there's going to be plenty of opportunity for Orbix to go back to specialising in airports really you know all this ground scenery is essentially photo real I'm not talking about what we're seeing here I'm talking about Microsoft 2020 the ground scenery is photo real with essentially auto generated uh, auto gen <laughs> if you like um, which from a distance is going to look convincing but up close isn't going to be the real thing so of course Orbix are going to fill that niche no problem with their sort of hand created up close and personal stuff whether they have any other part to play in the the new scenery regime remains to be seen Something else that's coming up on my channel very likely is, you know, for a while I've wanted to do this transatlantic trip, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take myself up to northern Canada, which is somewhere I flew to in my one of my previous Twin Otter close-up videos, Iqaluit, and then I'm gonna set off across the Atlantic. God, this is not a good takeoff. <laughs> and that will allow us to look at a few other sceneries. We're going to look at. We'll take a look at the global scenery with the. North American open land class. Of course, take a little brief look at that, then we're flying across to Greenland. We've got some aerosoft scenery. We fly over Greenland onto Iceland, which is the land class demo products technically from Orbix, but it's the whole of Iceland. Don't think I have any specific airport scenery for, for Iceland. Then we might visit the Faroe Islands. I've got a, well I don't have, but there is a Faroe Islands, at least an airport product for the main airport, Varg Varga, I think it's called. So we may get that, and then on to Northern Scotland. We might go via the Hebrides, so we get a look at Sumbra. We might go to Stornoway, although Stornoway, we wouldn't fly to Stornoway probably a genuine transatlantic ferry flight. I don't have the True Earth products for the, in fact the True Earth products for prepared GB, the only one that's been released to date is the Southern England, it's not really, well it's not that I don't want that, but the one I'd be more interested in getting is the, the North, or even the Central, up Central for Plane, which I haven't really fiddled with too much. But that's what's coming. And if I think of anything else interesting to do, that'll be coming too. Trip. 